So in my sing video, I talked about how people were kind of questioning on twitter.com the conversation of illumination and people kind of question they're like what's the deal with illumination why were we so dramatic because for a whole decade i learned nothing i didn't learn if there was a argument to be had about illumination i didn't know if there was something to defend about illumination i didn't know if it was just a mid conversation a meh conversation i truly don't know because things were just dramatic and overly escalated to the point where all we heard was nonsense and in the end that not only hurt the people that were trying to present a conversation to open the floodgates to many diverse voices and in a sense for a review aspect you know a way to improve or help illumination and the thing i notice with that is i feel like because illumination kind of fits that bill of happy fun time funny animated movies that are just you know fun to watch laid back and i noticed a pattern it was not only just illumination but it was dreamworks it was other studios you know etc etc i'm not gonna list all of them but you know what i mean and the thing that i noticed is a lot of us you know before me wanting to make content the thing i noticed was the content i was growing up in the 2010s that were these discussions slash and or review-esque videos about animation i noticed that these easygoing laid-back animated movies the conversation was lacking it was just loud over-the-top dramatic nonsense for a lot of it and i feel bad for those content creators trying to present their voice about this type of area in animation and one thing that i noticed was i adopted those no nonsense traits and at the same time it definitely affected me in terms of knowing myself and as you saw in that sing video i was really at a rock and a hard place because other people can go around saying how they felt about sing where for me i was scared to say my true feelings on sing forgot sing not because of the movie was forgettable but i forgot just how i felt and i only saw the movie one time and i went along with the crowd of hey death to illumination sing bad because death to illumination Alrighty, let's pack it up you know and because of that you know it definitely kind of made me question a lot and what i got out of my sing video was that you know you need to be yourself for one you need to know about the thing you're talking about you know it's okay to present how you feel comfortable in conversations and how you see things you know and in the end people will respect that and they'll join in your conversation it's really easy you know and it leaves the nonsense at the door but in terms of this um i wanted to kind of present uh three different movies that are in that laid back fun easygoing category and definitely the things that i've kind of learned from my experience of kind of leaving all of that dramatic nonsense at the door and kind of truly presenting my voice so other people understand me and i think that i don't know if you're going to take anything out of this this is just kind of me talking so i don't know if this can help you any but if it does great if not you know enjoy me just talking uh. <laughs>
So I said this in a very old video about the cartoon community and my issues with it, but back in the 2010s, the whole stigma of be loud, be dramatic, say nonsense was like a huge thing for the cartoon community. It wasn't just reviewers, it was the cartoon community as well. Not everyone keep that in mind, but it was very much present. And one of those things that with this stigma, with this type of attitude and approach, it definitely hurt the way I saw the Cars franchise, especially Cars 2. Now, Cars 2, or not Cars 2, but Cars 1 came out when I was in second grade and I adored it. I loved it from that point up until Cars 2. I love Cars, Lightning McQueen and Mater are like my favorite characters. I love that friendship tonight dynamic. I love the whole cast and world of Cars. It meant something to me. It's a comfort franchise for me. And when it came down to Cars 2 time, there was a conversation. But I didn't listen to that side. Not to mention, that side was really severely lacking because the over-the-top, dramatic, whale-of-a-tail disrespectfulness that was the big selling point for the Cars 2 uh, discussion and or review back in the day. And to hear that Cars 2 is the worst thing in the world, Mater is the worst thing in the world, Every Cars 2 character is the worst thing in the world. Cars was never a good franchise. Cars is for babies. And I was in middle school when Cars 2 came out, and hearing all of those things made me scared. Because maybe, just maybe, Cars, t Cars as a whole was a bad franchise, and I can't accept that, or I didn't notice it sooner. And that hurt me to the core, and it scared me. And I didn't even watch Cars 2. I just went along with the crowd. When Cars 3 showed up, I was hyped, but I was scared because I didn't watch Cars 2. And Cars is, you know, a bad franchise for babies, etc., etc. I was scared because of all of those things, didn't even experience it. And kind of like seeing, you know, when people would randomly go on Twitter.com and be like, hey, you know, what are y'all's thoughts on Sing? When it came down to people talking about Cars 2 and actually having an actual conversation that wasn't this gigantic mess of dramatic noise with nonsense, when people actually had a perspective, I was like, really scared because hey wait a minute cars 2 is bad you can't say anything you know that's you know cars 2 is bad with like actual reasoning you can't do that you can't say cars you liked cars 2 you can't can't say that with actual reasons as to why you like it N no C cars 2 bad cars was never good status quo guys can't you can't do that and over time, I realized, huh, wow, the fear of others' perspectives just it negatively impacted how I felt on, like, my favorite thing in the world, and I never even experienced the other two films and even the other content for Cars. Except for Planes, I actually I actually watched that. I actually like the first two Planes movie. That's just me. But, you know, uh, the, the, in terms of cars, not the world of flying vehicles, you know, in the, in the world of, you know, land cars, um, you know, um, I, I was like, I'm scared, you know? And, you know, because, like, the over-the-top dramatic stuff scared me, but... When I started to see the conversations, it scared me even more because, hey, wait a minute, you can't have, you know, logic, <laughs> you know? And, you know, it, it scared me that, you know, other people got to say, hey, um, the Cars franchise, not for me. Cars 2 wasn't for me. Cars 3 wasn't for me. 
um, or people like really still loving the Cars franchise and like that kind of made me feel bad and it's okay you know it's okay to fear the worst because others didn't like it that's fine you know it's it's fine to be cautious you know and that that was the thing i was not cautious i didn't well if people had a conversation like a lot more people had a conversation and this dramatic nonsense stuff wasn't the status quo back in the day i think we would be in a much better place i would be in a much better place but I wish that back in the day that conversation existed. And I wish that, you know, for me, I could be like, okay, I'm going to be cautious, optimistic, kind of, kind of scared with this, but um, I'm going to wait till the time is right. And then bada bing, bada boom, I'm watching Cars too, you know, and it's okay to wait a long time because I I just recently, like Friday, I just recently watched Cars 2, only Cars 2. I didn't get around to 3 yet. But when I got around to 2, uh, I liked it, you know? I really liked Cars 2, and it got me back to, like, my comfort franchise again. And keep in mind, I was like, you know, I decided to get into Cars when I felt comfy, and that's okay. Um, that's okay to feel like very cautious of, okay, this thing was blank opinion, gonna be very cautious, and I'm going to be cautious with my money. Uh, for me, when it came down to Cars 2, last year for my birthday, um, I was at a thrift store, saw Cars 2 for $5, picked it up, you know, that was better than paying say twenty dollars or even more if it's a blu-ray and i ended up not liking it you know for five dollars that's it's not bad you know and when i popped it in watched it i loved it and it got me back into cars again so really it's okay to fear the worst or not be sure on how you feel on how other people presented their perspective that's fine it's fine to be cautious, uh, it's fine to fear, but it, it's not okay to the point where, you know, you're just completely afraid of something. You know, you, you need to definitely, you know, go check out the thing for yourself, experience the thing for yourself, but at the same time, you know, think, think wisely with your time and money at the same time, you know? One time I was in the street, I was in the city. And someone was dressed up like this. Someone was dressed up like this. It was a small child. It was a small child dressed up like this. A small child. Otherwise, I wouldn't have tackled it and <laughs> broken some rib cage or whatever I did to it. But this time, it was dressed up like a minion. <laughs> and I couldn't take it. So I said something along of this before, but I thought I would just put it in this video too because, you know, it's important, um, but I like Minions. Uh, I like the Despicable Me franchise. Um, minions are comfort characters to me. They definitely mean something to me. Same with the Despicable Me franchise. And I'm going to be real. It's a struggle to like something that people kind of threw a label of, hate, hate to use the term, but cringe. You know, and then kind of make people who enjoy it feel lesser. And that's kind of the whole thing when it comes down to laid back, easygoing animated movies is people are viewed lesser if they enjoy it. And for me, you know, because of enjoying Minions, I just was fake because it was easy to just use it as a shield, you know, death to illumination. Am I right? Um, but like over the course of time, I just got bored of it. Like I, I just got tired. I was like, man, I would rather look like a weirdo and enjoy this thing than just be fake because of the status quo. And one interesting thing happened once we hit the 2020s is fanboy and chum chum and the Looney Tunes show two shows I actually really like, 
uh, nowadays are being praised to the high heavens, but back in the day, you know, it was kind of in that cringe, uh, if you enjoy it, you're viewed as lesser uh, type of thing. And the thing that I learned with this, it's like, you know, like the things you enjoy look weird, and then years later, if it just blows up in popularity all of a sudden, you know, you can, you know, hype it up with everyone else and be, you know, happy you get to share the thing that you like with others. You never know what can happen. So in my singing video, I talked about how sometimes it's not easy to enjoy films along this nature and how when it comes down to it because of how the status quo of everything is, you feel like you need a gigantic essay to defend yourself and to defend why you enjoy this thing, but sometimes you just don't have an essay, and sometimes it's just a very straightforward answer, and you don't really need anything really big to say. And that's totally okay. And, you know, just word yourself the best way you can, and yeah, you know, it's pretty easy, you know. Uh, but, you know, when it comes down for me with trolls, it's very easy for me to go on a whole essay as to why I enjoy it. And I'm going to be quite honest, it's okay to like something that's along the line of a franchise type of thing. It's very okay. And it's very okay to like everything that you know, the franchise has to offer. I'm more so, when talking about this, I'm more so looking at the film side of Trolls and not the television and etc. But, you know, for me, you know, I love both Trolls 1 and Trolls World Tour. I love both of those movies, but at the same time, even though I love both of them, it doesn't mean I'm not critical towards them. If you've seen my channel and talking about Trolls, I'm very critical. Anytime I hype it up, more than likely there's probably a video that's literally me saying, nah, this ain't it, chief. So, you know, just because you like something doesn't mean you can't be critical in your own way. And yeah, those are um those are the three things I learned from this whole ordeal. So yeah, thank you for coming to my Spectre talk.